Hey gang, welcome back to the channel. I'm Paul with Stud Pack. In our previous video, you saw that we repaired a shared neutral right here in preparation to put an exhaust fan in this bathroom because we didn't want the load from that fan being on that neutral. Go back and check out that video. The reason we're adding an exhaust fan is because this bathroom didn't have one. If you go back early in the series on this bathroom, you'll see that there was a lot of mold on the crown molding on the ceilings and the wallpaper was peeling because of the high humidity levels in this bathroom. The so crown was molding. What? <laughs> what did I say? You said crown molding, but I'm saying that the crown was molding. It was just a joke. Oh. So I picked up a Panasonic fan this morning. I love their exhaust fans. I like them because they're quiet and they're well made, but I noticed that this one says you can install it without getting in the attic, which really appealed to me. So let's see if that's true. This one requires a 10 and 7 8 inch hole in the ceiling. We've already got it marked out, so why don't we grab the buzz saw and our vacuum and get it cut out, Jordan? Let's do it. All right. All right, let's take this down, see how many things are in our way. <laughs> I think we did good. Let me. Uh, Oh, wow, right there. Yeah, let me cut this in. So, well, that's already, wow, look at that. Oh, it's already cut? Yeah. I had the invisible extension on here that you didn't see and cut right through that. <laughs> nice. <laughs> look at that, Jordan. We've only got 13 inches between the bottom of the roof rafter and the top of this ceiling joist. <whistles> that's why I wanted that, that fan that we can install without getting in the attic. Absolutely. Well worth the extra money. So before we start running the wire, let's see how much current this thing pulls. Shouldn't be much. It's just a fan. There you go, 0.25 amps. So we're on a 15 amp circuit. I've got some 14.2 wire. So why don't you push it through this hole and I'll reach up there and I'll try to grab it. All right. It's like bunching up in the soffit. Start pulling it out. Yeah. I'm just making a hook for Jordan. Don't make fun of me. I have a fish tape in the garage, but that's what we got right here. All right, bud, see if you can grab it with that. All right, let's try it. All right. All right. Start moving the wire around if you can. Okay, I see it. I got it. Uh, but now I can't pull it out. I wish there was a step right in between these two. Yeah, one of them is too low, and the next one your head's in the ceiling, huh? Yeah. All right, plan B, fish tape. I got a little hook in it. We'll try it. I got it. Nice. Great job, bro. See, it nodded. That's, it, wouldn't oh. let, it wouldn't let me pull it out because of that. Hmm. Alrighty, gang, we got the wire pulled. It wasn't too bad. Our next step is to pull the duct work. So let's go out to the truck and we'll show you our setup. So this is what we're going to use to exhaust the vent through the soffit. The inspectors around here approve of this method and it means we don't need a roofer and cut a hole in the roof. So I like this option. So let's cut out our template. Head to the backyard and get that hole cut in our soffit. All right, gang, we're out here at the soffit. And this right here is that bump out that we showed you in our shower video where we reframed that rotten shower. So this is the corner of that shower. We determined we want our exhaust to come out right here. Kind of hard to tell where this beadboard is fastened to the framing. So I just measured off the seam right there. 32 inches was about here, so I should be in the middle of my framing. We traced our template. I'm gonna drill a hole in the middle and show you a little trick. So that's a six inch diameter circle. I just put a four inch bend in this wire. I'm gonna put it in there and I'm gonna spin it. And I'm checking for obstructions, but see how it swings clear all the way around? I know that I don't have any blocking or anything in my way. So I'm good to cut this hole with the jigsaw. 
if I did hit a piece of blocking here, I can move this hole over and hopefully that hole ends up in our cutout. So let's cut this out now and then try to fish that ductwork. <laughs> if it fits mm -hmm. all right we've got the hole cut the six inch template is actually a little small we had to enlarge it probably what six and a quarter inch diameter something like something that something like that but now that we've got our hole cut we're ready to run our duct work i got this uh flexible foil duct it's four bathroom exhaust fans so i'm going to get outside with the fish tape i'm going to push it in towards jordan and he's going to try to grab it let's try it right, before i take the fish tape outside i'm going to do this i close that up a little bit and I'm gonna tape it because that hook will catch every single thing in the attic in its vicinity. And that's all I need. So let's go outside and try to push this through, bud. All right, so I see dad trying to push the fish tape through up there, but there's just no way that I'm gonna be able to get that. Ah, I need to go tell him. Yeah, man, I don't, I don't think this is gonna work, dude. Yeah, there's a lot going on between here in that fan location right there's all kind of framing in the way we got this bump out we got the lowered ceiling so why don't we go inside and regroup but why don't you show them in there with the camera what we're up against okay You know, there's a cathedral ceiling in that master bedroom, so we're fighting that too. We don't have an attic space above it. Right. So I think we're gonna have to come this way along the eave and then turn and head towards that family. Yeah, there's no way we can get that hose over that step where all that insulation is. With all those screws in the, in the plywood, it'll puncture the hose. I think our best bet is to go through that eave like you were saying. All right, well, I have an idea, so let's go check it out. Maybe it'll work. Alrighty guys, after a lot of trying, we could not get that fish tape through. There's a lot in our way. If you go back and watch the framing video on this shower, you'll remember the outside wall of the house is here. Then we have this little bump out for the shower. So that exhaust location for the ductwork is about right here on the other side of this wall. So I need to be able to get into this soffit and then turn and head that direction for our ductwork. I hate to cut this drywall. I sure wish there was a way that we could get access in there, Jordan. I got you. Nice. <laughs> Let's give it a try. Alrighty gang, we removed the old can light housing. It was just three little screws right there. It came right out. We have total access to this attic going this way and across to the soffit. And right here, see that beam? That's that step up, that big beam you saw from the footage inside the eave. I can stick my hand right over the top of it and I know that I'm in this eave. So the plan is, Jordan's gonna get on that ladder. I'm gonna be right here. And we're gonna try to get that duct work from that opening to this one. Let's give it a shot, bud. I ain't up in there. Can you see me? Yeah. <laughs> hey. All right, so uh, I'm gonna try it. That's where I'm tossing it. All right. Okay. All right, guys. Unfortunately, that eight foot hose did not reach. I knew that was gonna happen, so I have some more. I bought this little piece of uh, dryer extension tubing. We're gonna put it in there and tape it and connect those together. But first I need to crimp this other side so it'll slide in that tubing much easier. So this will just take a second. All right, now that that's done, let's tape these together, bud. Right, we're gonna tape these together using foil tape. No duct tape or that plastic stuff. I love this stuff right here. Pretty good. Nice. All right, now let's connect the two together. Cool, man. Nice. All right, now I'm gonna go over to that can light and pull all this through. All right, dude, you should be able to, to grab it. 
got it? Wow. Cool. Nice. All right, that was cool, bud. So now that hose is sitting in the eave right here. Let's go outside and see if we can find it. Hop up there, bud. See if you can see it. All right. No. No. <laughs> Where is it? All righty, gang, new plan of attack. We've got this glow rod with this hook on it. So I'm gonna stick this glow rod through the eave down to where dad can access it. He's gonna try and reach his hand over, take this hook, attach it to the hose, and I'm gonna try and pull it through. But we need to see if he can grab it first, so let's try it. Yeah, you got it. All right, the glow rod method worked. Now I'm gonna hook them together and try to pull it the rest of the way. You wanna give him a shot of that, Jordan? Yeah, so there's the glow rod and the duck. And then we got to get under those two rafters where the glow rod's coming from. And that's where our soffit is. Yep. Let's give it a shot. All right. Hopefully I can guide it. <laughs> oh my God, I see it. Ah. See, now it's unraveling, but I think I can save it. Alrighty, gang. This exhaust vent has turned out to be exhausting. We tried all our tricks to get this from here to that opening in the eave. There's just too much framing in the way. Too many nails, the air conditioning line set, insulation wires, all that stuff. The reason I went that direction is because it's the shortest distance. So we're gonna change our plan and we're gonna go this way to the other side. It'll be a longer distance, but it'll be a straight run. So we're gonna get in the attic, lay this across there, throw it into the eave, go outside, cut the circle in our eave, just like you saw us do here, reach in and pull this out. On this side, we'll repair that hole we made by turning it into a soffit vent and the attic will get more air, so that's a good thing. So we thought about getting a roofer and just punching through the roof, but they are hundreds and hundreds of dollars to do exhaust vents through the roof. And they are weeks out on their schedule. So we felt like we could do this ourselves and go out the soffit. So we're gonna get it done. We're gonna get up in the attic, throw this over there, and it's gonna work. Now it's become personal, we're gonna get it done. This is gonna work, bud. It's gonna work. All right, this is gonna work. It's gonna work. This is gonna work. All right, you guys, this grill has three prongs on it up here that snap onto the wire that's embedded in this duct. That was a little hard to get on there. We really had to stretch it. So we taped it in addition to relying on those prongs so it wouldn't come off. So we're gonna put it in here. So let's see, square it up with the building, huh, Jordan, like that? Right. Look good. And put it in. Whew, that was a job. All right, we're about ready to put this fan in. This is the support frame for it. And they really engineered this pretty cool. It flips up like that so you can get it in the opening. Once it's in the attic, you flip these down and then you drive these screws into the framing and the fan attaches into these slots. Pretty cool, huh? Let's put it in. Cool. All right. All right, gang, we've got it wired. Now it's time to lift it in place. But this is always the problem with trying to install one of these after the ceiling's done. You put it in there and you can't tip it up. But they've engineered it around that. Check this out. You move this screw right here. And watch this. That moves, allows you to get it above the ceiling. Then it comes back down and you put the screw back and everything's the way it should be. Hmm, let's see it in action. All right. Just like that. Boom. Now you use your three hands to hold the vent. Right. And screw it in. Uh-huh. <laughs> that. 
that. And let's put this screw back. Okay. Whew. All right. Here's the fan speed control, 80 CFM or 110. I put it on 110. Now, we didn't hook that duct work up because we have to get in the attic. But if you didn't have attic access, you could see how easy it would be to hook up your duct first, just like the wire, and push it into the attic. Especially if you were replacing an old one, which is really what this is made for. All right, let's power this thing up and turn it on. All right, again, it's all wired up. Let's check to see if it works. I hear it. Good job, bud. Nice. Now, I wanted to have this box in already and, and not have to do that, but we spent so much time running that exhaust duct, we didn't have time to put up the sheetrock. So what's going to happen here is this gets a dimmer for this light, and an old workbox is going to go here for the switch for the exhaust fan. And we'll put that in, obviously, after we put up the sheetrock. But that's another video. So right now, we're going to call it a day. I think our next step, Jordan, put that up, start skim coating so we can paint, hook up the ductwork in the attic on that one. Any more work in the attic? Yeah, well, I was wondering, since we put a hose and we exhausted this one, is that toilet exhausted inside of that room? The don't fan? Even, don't even ask. <laughs> so when I was up there, I got to see it, and there's no exhaust hose. It is typical insulation. I hardly ever see that done. And in fact, they put the insulation bats right up against the exhaust on the fan. So even when that fan's running, it's not moving any air. So we're gonna do the same thing on that fan that we did to this one. We'll run it side by side with the other one. And I think that'll take care of all the exhaust problems in this bathroom. So if you like the video, be sure to smash that like button for us. Drop us a comment below, ask a question, leave us a tip. Loving all the tips you've given us. Subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you on the next one.